Hello, in this video I'm showing some issues which I've come across when I've been installing the brand new Valiant Ecotech Plus combination boilers. Now these new boilers have got a really thick bit of insulation on the back of them and it's been giving me some issues when I've been trying to hang the boiler. And also once the boiler's hung it's kind of springy, it doesn't sort of sit back against the wall, you can push against it and it kind of bounces backwards and forwards. So I'm going to show you what I've done to make hanging it easier and what I've done to stop that springiness of the boiler. Just recently I replaced an old Valiant Ecotech Plus 831 with a brand new 836. Now the boiler is supposed to line up perfectly with the flue and the pipes but I found that wasn't quite the case for me so I'll show you what I did find. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I found this really useful menu which gives you all the information that the boiler is doing at that point in time. So it gives you your flow temperature, your return temperature, how many litres of water you're using, whether it's a hot water mode, central heating mode, really useful little menu. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you where I found it. Just before I get on with the video I want to quickly remind you that down in the description I've got lots of videos all about this boiler. So how to commission it, the different programmers you can use, that's a sensor room or the sensor room pure. I've got a video for your customers on how to use the boiler and of course there's lots of other useful videos so make sure you check out down in the description. Right now let's get on with this video. Now here I am with a brand new Valiant Ecotech Plus 836. Now I've now fitted three of the Valiant Ecotech Plus boilers. And I've had the same issues with each insulation, that being the hanging bracket and the insulation on the back of the boiler. Incidentally, I'm not overly keen on this new box the boiler comes in. So here's the back of the boiler and we've now got this thick bit of insulation on the back of it. Now one of findings happening is as I push the boiler up against the wall and you've got to push it quite hard to get the boiler to engage with the hanging bracket on the wall. And that's because the insulation on the boiler is really thick and it's holding the boiler away from the wall. And what I'm finding is happening is bits of insulation is breaking off and it's getting stuck underneath the bracket. And then the boiler sits high and doesn't sit squarely on the bracket. And it's been made worse because they put two holes in the insulation there and the bracket just seems to push against that, grab the insulation there and just break it off. Now we all know sometimes we can be in that really tight space and we haven't got a lot of room so we just lift the boiler up, we push it against the wall and then let it slide down and waiting for that sound when it hits the bracket and wiggle it around to make sure it is fully on the bracket correctly. And the last thing that we want to be doing is taking the boiler back off the wall because we just feel it doesn't feel right on that bracket. So on this last boiler what I've decided to do is just break this bit of insulation off before I hang it on the wall. And just so you know, when I did hang this boiler, it went on there with no trouble at all. I just lifted the boiler up and then slid it down on the wall. And then you hear that clunk as it hit the bracket and gave it a little wiggle and thought, yeah, that's nice and secure. Now, this was the second boiler that I fitted. This is a Valiant Ecotech 832. And I was replacing an old Valiant, which was the 831. And here it was before I removed it. Just so you know, if you are replacing an old Valiant, then everything should line up so you can leave the old bracket on the wall, the flue hole should be in the same place and the pipes should all line up. Now I find that that wasn't quite the case. And I'll go into that in a little more detail in just a moment. Now I'm wiggling the boiler around here thinking this doesn't quite feel right. Now I'm checking the pipes and I'm thinking these should all line up perfectly. But they didn't. And they were all out by about quarter of an inch which you can see just here. That also meant that the flue was out by about a quarter of an inch also. So I decided to take the boiler back off the wall and maybe check with a template to see that everything was lining up. But you can see as soon as I lift the boiler down, you can see there is insulation stuck in the bracket. And that's why it didn't quite feel right on the bracket. And you can see here, as I lowered the boiler down, it just broke a big chunk of insulation off the back of the boiler and got it stuck in the bracket, which obviously is not great. So I decided on the second installation, as part of the insulation had already broken off, I might as well just take the rest of it off. Now I'm rehanging the boiler for the second time, and this time I felt a lot happier when it went down. I felt and heard the clunk as it hit the bracket, and I could slide the boiler along the bracket, as you know you can. Now I made a mark on the wall where the boiler was last time, and you can see the boiler has dropped, but it is only by a couple of millimetres. My pipes now are a little bit better, but they still don't quite line up. Now I'll come back to this issue in a minute, but I just want to finish off about the insulation first. 
Now, what I'm showing you here is that insulation holds the boiler off the wall. And when I push against the boiler, you can see the boiler just springs back and forwards. And when you look side on like you can with this boiler, you can definitely see there's quite a big gap on the bottom and there's not much gap at the top. And because the boiler can move in and out, it doesn't give you a fixed point for the pipes, which I don't like. So what I've done is to just drill a hole under the boiler next to the frame and then put a screw in it with a washer and just do that screw up. And that just pulls the boiler back against the wall like that. And when we go and look at the side of the boiler now, you can see there's an equal gap all the way up the side of the boiler. So it looks much better and it's no longer springy at the bottom. So that's the insulation dealt with. Now I want to go back to replacing an old valent boiler with this brand new boiler. Now I went to a presentation a short while ago by Valiant where they introduced us to everything you need to know about this new boiler. Now in this presentation, Simon made this statement. So the whole boiler is exactly the same footprint as the existing boiler. So if you're taking an, an existing Ecoset Series 1, Series 2, Series 3, Series 4 off the wall, it will be a like-for-like -like replacement, even to the point where the hanging bracket, and I, I can confirm this came out of the box, the hanging bracket is exactly the same. So if the hanging bracket is still attached to the wall, leave it on the wall. You do not need to change the hanging bracket. So that's exactly what I've done here. I've taken the old Ecotech off the wall, I've left the bracket in position, and I'm going to use all the old existing pipe tails. Now this is the new boiler on the wall, and it's hung on the original bracket. And you can see that the pipes are out of alignment by about 8 millimeters. Now luckily enough for me, on this installation I could move the pipework up, so I got them to all line up without any problem. You can see on this pipe clip here where the pipes used to be and where they are now. Lucky enough for me, the flue hole was big enough that it didn't cause a problem. All I'm saying is when you come to replace an old Valiant yourself, use the new template, check your bracket, flue and pipes alignment. So if the bracket isn't quite in the right position, it might be a lot easier just to move the bracket than move the pipes and adjust the flue. On my third install of this boiler, I did actually check the template because I thought maybe that was out. Because I remember many years ago, I think it was the Ecomax, the template was out by a little bit. But you can see that this new template lines up perfectly with the flue, bracket and the pipes on this brand new Ecotech Plus 836. So when you replace an old Ecotech boiler with one of these new boilers, if you get the same issues, then maybe you can let us all know in the comments and what you did to correct it or whether my second install was just some kind of weird freaky anomaly. Just a couple of other things I had to do. The new gas valve has a test point on it now, so that makes the valve a little bit longer, so you need to trim about 12 mil off the pipe. Also, you wanna cut a couple of inches off the condensing pipe, because now we have that rubber connecting piece. And I found that the pressure relief pipe was fouling on the new condensing trap, so I had to remove that and realign it. One last thing you might want to watch out for, I took the door off the cupboard here so I could get access to the cupboard a lot easier. After I finished the install, the last thing I did was screw the door back onto the cupboard. As I did this, I leant against the cover of the boiler and the cover popped in. Luckily, it popped back out again and didn't leave any marks. So just watch out for that. So finally, just to finish off with a really good point, which I found on this new boiler. When I was commissioning the boiler, I was looking at this chimney sweep mode and I was looking at the display and thinking, this isn't very good. I can't see what temperature the boiler is running at. And then I noticed that the little question mark was also lit up. When you touch the question mark, you then go into another level where it's got all the information that the boiler is doing at that point in time. Really, really useful. And I literally just found this the other day on my third install. So do check this menu out. I'm thinking you can probably access this from somewhere else within the menus. Doing fault diagnosis in the future, this would probably be one of my go-to places. Thinking how useful this is, I'm gonna do a little bit of research on it and then make a separate video on it. So do watch out for that one. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope you find this video useful. Let us know in the comments what you find. I won't be too surprised in the future if Valiant makes some changes. 
So if you want to watch my video on how to commission this boiler, you can click on the link just there. If you want to watch the sensor room video, you can click just there. If you found the video useful, then of course, click on that thumbs up. And of course, you can share the video with your friends. Click on that subscribe, ring on the bell for notification. And a cup of coffee in my toolbox fund is always really appreciated. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.